When your EcoFlow runs out of battery, well then you just plug it in, of course. But what happens if you're nowhere near a power plug? Fortunately, the folks over at EcoFlow have got you covered. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. You guys have already seen us using this EcoFlow battery generator with stuff like our regular RV. But this is also great for power on the go pretty much anywhere, including out at the job site with your truck or in more remote areas. And for that reason, it's probably actually quite common for you to not have the access to power to recharge your unit. Traditionally, you've been stuck with a cigarette adapter, which is a very, very very slow charge rate or a soft sided solar panel setup that can add up to about 400 watts of charging power, but that's still pretty slow. And that's why the folks over at EcoFlow have made this. This is an 800 watt high speed alternator charger that plugs into your EcoFlow battery generator. And today we're going to explore connecting it and do a quick hookup to the actual system to see what kind of recharge rate we get. So join us as we install this actually on our truck today and then give it a quick test run. Now we've already done an unboxing of this thing, so you guys know what's inside here, but I'm just going to refresh everyone's memory. We've got the battery connection that connects to the side port on your EcoFlow unit right there and connects to the charger itself. We've got this massive cable right here, which connects to the battery of your vehicle and a fuse as well. We've got a mounting bracket, which we'll look at as part of the install. And we've got the EcoFlow alternator charger unit itself, complete with all of the ports here that we need to connect it up. I said in the other video, and I'm gonna say it again, this has an aluminum construction. It is very solid and it feels almost like a giant Apple TV as far as the fit and finish and everything. It just seems very, very high quality when I'm looking at this thing. Nord VPN. Maybe you've never considered a VPN before because they are only for criminals and people that have something to hide. But that is simply not true. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. A VPN creates an encrypted tunnel for your data which protects your online identity by hiding your IP address and allows you to use public Wi-Fi hotspots safely. But if you have nothing to hide, why would you need a VPN? For secure online entertainment. Do you like gaming online? Well, forget about DDoS attacks and bandwidth throttling with NordVPN. It's a VPN that gamers love and it's very gamer friendly. Do you want a more relaxed evening of sitting back and enjoying a show? Watch your favorite TV series and movies without slowdowns. NordVPN can save your movie night by preventing your ISP from throttling your connection. Also, top secret tip, you can access shows in other regions that are normally region blocked by using a VPN and setting your home connection to whatever country the show that you wanna watch is airing from. This works with Netflix, Hulu, and all of the major streaming companies to access those shows that normally you wouldn't be able to see. For private internet browsing, government agencies, marketers, and internet service providers would all love to track and collect your browsing history, messages, and other private data. The best way to hide it? Using a VPN to keep your data safe. For safe traveling, Use NordVPN to secure your connection on public Wi-Fi so you can browse in full privacy even when you're far away from home. Hackers have many methods to steal your data on public hotspots, but with a VPN, your online traffic is invisible to them. Ready to give NordVPN a try? Click the link down below in the description for exclusive Gears and Tech offers and discounts on a brand new signup you can cancel anytime but grab this deal before it expires. Signing up through the link below does help this channel out a little bit extra as well, and we really appreciate your support. Let's get back to the video. So the next thing we wanna do, obviously, is hook it up. The easiest thing you're gonna do is go to your vehicle, wherever you're hooking it up, and pop the hood. This cable is actually very long, so I'm gonna just measure it off real quick. That's five, that's 10, that's 15, and a little bit. So this cable is at least 15 feet long. It is very high gauge wiring 
And this means that for all of you guys with your hashtag van life setup, you could easily run this cable all the way from the front of your vehicle into the back where you probably want all of your power anyway, so that you don't have to move your EcoFlow every time you charge. Now I'm not gonna do a full wire tucked install today. I'm just gonna do a functional setup install. That means we're gonna hook this all up under the hood, but use your imagination here. Anywhere where you can fish this wire, you can get this setup installed to and your length is probably not going to be a problem. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. So here we are at the truck. We're going to just pop this hood up. And Ford was nice enough. You see, Ford knows if you drive a Ford, you're gonna be under the hood. So they were nice enough to make this step space here so we can step and reach all the way up under the engine bay. Let me demonstrate. Inside here, so you can see all the way around here. You can stand right here without falling anywhere. I can reach absolutely everything that I need to. So thanks, Ford. But for our purposes today, I actually only need to get to the battery right here. So I'm not going to be using the step that they provided. And really all I'm looking to do is connect the positive and the negative up to the cable that I have. So I'm going to get that all hooked up and then I'm going to jump back and show you guys what I did. Cause you don't need to see me loosening some screws and doing all that. You guys are smart enough to know what I've done once I show you. So we'll jump back in a second. The connection was dead simple. I used the massivest giant crescent wrench. I'm going to show you guys real quick what that connection to the battery looks like. So here is our battery. You can see we got the negative terminal here. We got the positive terminal right over here. Now the negative is simple because it's just the black wire coming off the other end of this long cable. The red wire, you're going to want to make sure to use the included fuse. So I'll pull the cover off there. You can see it comes with a 125 amp fuse. This is important because due to the length of this wire, if there was a short anywhere in this wire, you want this fuse to blow long before this wire completely melts and burns up. Very, very critical that you have a fuse and you always have the fuse as close to the battery connection as possible. In this case, it's about six inches. Now on my battery, I actually have multiple battery connection points. I made sure to connect to the one that comes straight off the alternator so that I have the highest amount of power available. If you accidentally end up on a smaller one, you could end up pulling a lot more current than you want to and cause a problem of some sort. This is what this connection looks like. Now it's time to grab the EcoFlow and hook it up. Here we are with the charger itself. Now the nice thing is all of these ports are marked so it's impossible to hook it up incorrectly. So this will only fit into the port that has a picture of a car. I don't know if you guys can see it here. That's a picture of the car and it only goes one way and it just clips in just like that. It won't go any other way. It only goes this way. So that way you know that this is connected. Now, if you're putting this in your engine bay, you probably don't want to. It is waterproof. It is sealed, but it's pretty big. It's pretty expensive. So ideally you're going to put this inside your vehicle somewhere. Now I've got the shorter cable and this is the one one end goes to the battery one end goes to the EcoFlow unit itself for the battery connection there's a little picture that says battery right there and right here there's the same picture now again this will only let you install it one way so I'll try and do it the other way and it won't go like it it physically has little pins there that stop you from doing it wrong so I'm going to just plug that in this that is connected and then this other end goes to the EcoFlow and it says right on it, EcoFlow. So I'm gonna go grab that. And we'll try and connect this up. Now you remember that step that we talked about Ford making? It's also an EcoFlow battery holder because I could set this right on here just like this and it'll just sit here all day. Now, many of you guys bought an EcoFlow battery generator and you wondered what this is for on the side and it says extra battery port but it also doubles as an extra charge port. Now, question you're gonna have is, if I have the extra battery, does this work? Well, unfortunately, unless that battery has an extra, extra port on it, you would have to unplug the extra battery, charge this first, then charge the extra battery, and then go like that. Hopefully, it actually has two ports in my editor, 
going to turn me into a liar right now by finding a picture of it and showing it to you guys because I don't have the extra battery, so I'm not totally sure. But if you only have the one port, then you only are able to charge one at a time. Connection is as simple as going like this and plugging that in, just like that. Now, I heard it click and something's happening. I'm going to just turn this around. Now that it's all connected up, I want to show you guys real quick what we see on the EcoFlow unit itself. When we look on here, you guys can see it is green. There's a green light lit up there. If I press the power button on here, it says 0% and something. I wonder if this is waiting for me to start my truck before it's going to let me charge this thing. So I'm going to go start the truck real quick and we'll see what happens. Now with the vehicle started, you may think that it should just start charging, but there is a top secret trick that you're missing, and I missed it. If I'm being honest, I actually had to go check the instructions, but good news. Since you're watching this video, I'm gonna save you from the embarrassment of having to read the instructions, and I'm gonna show you something real quick. On the side of this, this is the telephone looking plug. There's a little black thing right there. And that looks like just a little black thing, but it's actually a button. So if I push that, that will turn the EcoFlow unit on. And then when I come down here, what we get now is a charging screen. 2% charge. This thing was dead, dead, dead. And the input is jumping around right now. I saw it as high as like 700 a second ago. So it's going up to 400, 425, 430. Now this will support up to 800 watts of input power. Turn that thing back on. They were at 483 now, 490 something. We might hit 500. Now it says the recharge time is gonna be two hours based at this rate, but if we get the full 800, we should charge a whole lot faster than that. Now obviously this isn't how you're gonna install it on your vehicle. I wanna just hook it up, show you what it looks like hooked up. This thing, you're gonna go put wherever you can inside your vehicle so that it can charge right next to where this guy is. There's a couple things that you should understand about this thing. It is fully supported by Bluetooth in the app. So the same app you used to add your EcoFlow, you can also add this super fast turbo charging system to monitor kind of what it's at. So it'll tell you that it's outputting power and whatever. Now the other thing is it only actually charges while the vehicle is running. So it needs to see at least 14 volts coming in to charge this battery. Now, you RV guys, I know what you're asking. Can this be used in an RV to fast charge this? The answer is actually yes. There's a couple ways that it's gonna work though. If you have solar panels like I have, it will actually see the 14 volts of charging power that it needs for it to trigger the fast charge and it'll pull all the power it can off of your solar panels whatever it can give. Now you guys saw when we were looking at this, it's actually doing 800 watts right. So here it is doing 800 amps or at 5% and it says it will be charged in one hour from now, connected through the EcoFlow battery charger quick charging system. So we are getting the full 800 amps of power right now. Now how does it decide how much? This is obviously variable. It takes as much power as it can off of your charging system, whatever's left over. So as long as you're not running like a big car stereo or pulling a huge draw, it can take the full 800 amps because your alternator can supply that. Well, then it just drops down how many watts it is. Now, it is doing some tricky, fancy things with the battery voltage here, and that's how we can get the whole 800 amps Whereas when you're using a 12 volt system, you just don't get the power. And that's due to the calculation for power in or power into this battery is a relationship between your volts and your current. If you increase the voltage, you can keep the current low, keep the alternator happy and charge this thing super duper duper fast. What is the output voltage on this? I would guess it's about 60 or 72 volts. What I think the battery inside here is rated at, which it's way more technical than what you guys really care about. All you wanna know is, does this work? Absolutely. It is charging so fast right now. I'm super excited about how quick this is charging. If you wanna get one, I'll put a link in the description where you can grab that EcoFlow unit. If you don't have the EcoFlow generator, I'll put a link for that as well. They do have some kits and combos and promotions and all of that stuff. And you absolutely get access to all of those promotions when you click that link down below. If you have more questions about this setup, 
let me know because I can always do another video and show it to you guys. For my final, final check, I'm gonna go shut the truck off and see if it stops charging, just to make sure I haven't been lying about this this whole time. So good thing you stayed to the end because you might find out Anton doesn't know what he's talking about. Truck is off. It says zero input. We're at 7%. If I tap this guy, does it turn it on? No. So it definitely was looking for that truck to be running which is what we've been saying all along and that's expected i mean you don't want to just pull the battery power out of your battery you need to use the alternator to charge it but when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you can't charge this thing fast any other way this is one of the fastest ways that you can charge your ecoflow unit now i know you're wondering anton you said one of the fastest is there a faster way kind of and we'll cover that in a different video with a different product but if you're looking for the most simple solution easiest to handle no guesswork no nothing this is it hey thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video we hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel consider joining our members group that's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.